Hello, this is Glenda Carlin. This is our weekly Zoom A Course of Miracles meeting. It is Tuesday night, September 28th, 2021. Welcome everyone. It's sure great to see each of your smiling faces. And one of the first things Jesus has us do throughout the course is recognize our brother as the Holy Son of God and say is also face of Christ, etc. So I say, welcome, Holy Son of God, Anne Marie, Holy Son of God, Troy, Holy Son of God, Eli, Holy Son of God, Tina, and that kitty cat, Holy Son of God, Cat, Holy Son of God, Lynn, Holy Son of God, Sally, and her dogs, Holy Son of God, Sharon, Holy Son of God, Joan, Holy Son of God, Debbie, Holy Son of God, Teresa, Holy Son of God, Corinne, and Holy Son of God, Glenda. Welcome, 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 you all. And... The other thing I always do, now Jesus, Holy Spirit are always here, but they will never ever intrude, but I call on them and invite them in to our meeting. I invite in Holy Spirit, Jesus, Buddha, enlightened beings, ascended masters. We, we want all your help. Come and inspire us and help us have fun. <laughs> And, and then the next thing we want to do is do a short meditation of a couple of minutes. So if you want to relax in your chair, then just um, take a couple of breaths or however you want to relax the form. And let's see, welcome. We have, I just let in someone else, but I don't see him here yet. I'll keep watching the side over here. Oh, look, there she is. I'm not sure, or he, O-H-I-C-A. Welcome, Holy Son of God, O-H-I-C-A. Hi, welcome, it's Olika. Welcome. Say again. Olika. Olika? Yeah. Welcome, Olika. Welcome, honey. Thank you. Okay. All right. Now we I've invited in Holy Spirit, Jesus, Buddha, enlightened beings, ascended masters. Next, we're going to meditate just for a couple of minutes. So if you just relax there and in my meditation that I do, it, it, it's based on the course of miracles in that in the course, Jesus says, we each are connected to eternity via a great ray. And that is a cord of light in Hinduism. I think it's called a cord of light but Jesus calls it a great ray and it runs vertically through the top of your head, down the middle of your form into the ground. It in essence is your true self, your true nature, the form it radiates light out every cell of your body. But until your arc of light is released, you don't always, you don't feel that great ray, but we visualize it. It is here now. And so just, uh, visualize a huge sun above your head and that sun's not like the sun here of this is symbolic of source it's like a million times the brilliance of that sun and there's a ray that comes off of it see that ray comes straight down it's a column of light through the top of your head down into the ground you always want to stabilize the ray and that light is so pristine so loving so beautiful you want to join with it but before or rejoin with it because you never have been apart. We just seem to be asleep. <laughs> You've never been apart from it. But before you rejoin, I want you to visualize an altar in your mind and put on that altar the things you think you need to be happy. And then see that altar and your body disappear into the light. Now focus your attention on this. It, you, it's invisible. You can't see it. You're just, I call it fake it while you make it. You're just visualizing that light. Like I've said, we for billions of years visualize images and forms which keep us separate from God so we can sure as heck now visualize this light that we are and that God is. You are the light of the world. So visualize that light and rejoin with it. And you can do that just in seconds. 
you know, like rest in the light is another word I use. You just kind of shake your shoulders. Just try to decontract your body, relax your form and just rest. Visualize just resting your mind, your weary heart and mind in that light. Let that light settle. And you could also visualize that Holy Spirit and Jesus and source, God, is love. You were created out of love and you can visualize Holy Spirit and Jesus just pouring love particles like in the shapes of hearts, love particles down that column, tube of light. The love that you are that I call that light soaked with love. I call it love light. Is soaked with love. Visualize those red hearts of love that extend through every cell of your form. It's like a hologram. Light, light just extends through every cell. Quantum physics says there's no solidity here at all. It's all space and light. Just an illusion that there's a form here, although we never put our body in harm's way. So you're just joining with, rejoining with that light for a second. However you want to do that. Letting that light extend or radiate out from the center, from the center of your head, center of your whole form, out through every cell. And if your mind wanders to any thought, or, or I call it Velcro to any thought, any sentence or word that I say, just, just see that thought float away like a cloud in the sky or a bird in the sky. Not permanent. These are just thoughts. But we tend to, to attach to a thought or push a thought away. And then that makes the thing real, makes the thought real. But in essence, your light is love light. So just let that thought pass on by. Now later, you can practice true forgiveness on whatever image has been showing up here in your mind. But we won't do that right now. Okay, and then when you want, you can bring your attention back to your room, this place. But, but you can do these meditations for a few minutes, or I now meditate with two Buddhist groups for an hour a day. And I have found having a deep meditation is transforming. Because the three major ways to undo false ego is first, practice true or advanced forgiveness that Jesus speaks about in the course, which is we, which Jesus says in the course, Christ's vision has one law. He says that Christ's vision has one law, that you do not look at your brother as a body. You look beyond the body to the light, that, that invisible light that is there. So in true forgiveness, we look past the form to the invisible light that's there and or we say silently, you are spirit, whole, pure, and innocent, all is forgiven and released. Or you say all of it to any image or body that shows up in front of your face during the day. So now that's a perfect time. Pick three people on the screen. And if any of you don't have that a, a true forgiveness document that I put together from the course, Gary Menard's Fearless Love CD and Love Has Forgotten No One and Your Immortal Reality, I'll sure email it to you. Pick three people on the screen and practice true or advanced forgiveness on them. Now, because you don't may not have that document, say all of it. Silently say all of it to three people on the screen. Now, what I want to share is it's that simple. <laughs> After I found Gary Renard's Disappearance of the Universe, in 2014, I started saying all of it to whatever showed up in front of my face into images, 
in my mind, like when you were meditating, each of you, maybe a family member showed up in there or a TV star or a news or a politician. You want to write that down and practice saying this forgiveness about that person. But I didn't know what I was doing. I just had faith and trust that Jesus and Holy Spirit knew what they were doing. And for five years, I said all of it to everything. And my arc of light got released in March of 2019. And then the great race started downloading. So I'm here to explain to you, I'm nothing special. If I can do it. Anybody can do it. And Jesus says in front of the workbook, he says explicitly, you don't have to understand any of this. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You don't have to understand any of it. Just practice. Just apply. And so what I'm explaining to you, just do wrote. Fake it while you make it, this true forgiveness. Second thing, you turn your day over to Holy Spirit. And third, you meditate. And if you do those three things with faith and diligence, I can almost bet that you'll wake up in this lifetime. Because very few people are doing this. Like in Gary Renard's Love Has Forgotten No One, Art and Person tell Gary, if you think of someone as all of it or as everything there is, you are doing what very few people have done in history. Now think about what history means. History means the billions of years since the Big Bang that we had the single tiny mad idea that we want to be separate from God and do our own thing, make things, and forgot to laugh about it. And the Big Bang occurred and we made form. Made, we didn't create, we made form. We made this dream we're in. So We've been, we've been imagining forms for all those years, and that's history. You'll be doing what very few people have done in history is to think of your brothers and yourself as all of it, and it's life-changing, totally transforming. And that kind of segues into our topic for tonight. And you all know that I tend, whatever top, what I seems to be do, going on with me tends to be what I'm talking about because I can then share my experiences with it. So it's not just words. It's just not words from the course or intellectually thinking this. That's what Jesus, uh, Anne-Marie was talking about that. What Jesus says, it's in the application of the workbook lessons and these, this true and advanced forgiveness, you will have, to have experiences and it's the experiences that will build your faith and confidence and help motivate you to continue on with your work. But I'm also here to say it is so it, I never had experiences in, ver, that I can remember in that five years. I just kept saying all of it <laughs> and practicing uh, forgiveness. So bless your hearts. If you have some actual revelations or experiences or along the way, that's great, but it doesn't have to happen at all. Um, okay, now the topic for tonight is from chapter 18, and that chapter heading is Passing of the Dream, section six, which is Beyond the Body. And why this has come up to me is when I'm out walking, I walk around three to four miles a day. And that's also in one of Gary Renard's books, Art and Persa, or listing a whole page of items that we can do to relax the ego as we undo it. And I've got that document if anybody wants it. But one of them is to walk. Because <laughs> when you're out in nature, that also puts you in a more spacious sky like in Buddhism, they talk about sky gazing, you're out in the spaciousness and openness, which replicates where you are wanting to do with your mind. Right now, your minds are turned outward and you're seeing projections and believing in those projections in the illusion. And by doing the lessons of the course, you're bringing your mind, you're turning your mind in on itself back inward. And when you turn inward, then you're, you're recognizing your nature. Your nature is love and light, all encompassing love, light, immortal spirit. That's your nature. That's your nature. So, uh, when I'm out walking, I'll go, there's nothing out there. <laughs> there's nothing outside of you. Now, why that comes up is because it's the definition of heaven. And that's in chapter 18, section six, paragraph one. And I'll read Jesus's paragraph. There's nothing outside of you. So now what's that mean? 
I mean, if you close your eyes right now and just say that sentence, there's nothing outside of me. That means none of these forms on the screen are really here. You're not really here. These are, these are images in our mind that we're mentally reviewing, Jesus says, that's straight from the course, but it gets the images get projected from the mind out in front of you. So we're, going, we're using those projected images to wake ourselves up. They're salvation. They're, they're, they're your way out to practice forgiveness. But there's nothing out there. That is what you must ultimately learn, for it's the realization that the kingdom of heaven is restored to you. For God cre only, created only this. He did not depart from it or leave it separate from himself. The kingdom of heaven is the dwelling place of the Son of God, who left not his father and dwells not apart from him. Heaven is not a place nor a condition. It is merely an awareness of perfect oneness and the knowledge that there's nothing else, nothing outside this oneness and nothing else within. Now, you want to be gentle with yourself because that is like one of the ultimate definitive statements from the course. <laughs> definitive means in one sentence it can say the whole course. There's nothing outside of you. Now, that freaks out ego because I remember in 2014 when I found a paragraph in the course that said I couldn't have one dark companion to be in God's presence, and I went, oh, S-I-H-I-T, then I'll never be in heaven. Help me, Holy Spirit. And I said it three or four times, help me, Holy Spirit, out of desperation, and the image of a book showed up. And I went and found that book upstairs. I'd never opened it, never read it, and was the disappearance of the universe. And in that, it described the advanced true forgiveness where you look past your brother's body to the invisible spirit that's there. And that, from that, then, once in a while, I would think about, you know, if there's invisible, immortal spirit, light here spread out over the earth, these other images are our projections, which is what chapter 18 talks about. And then I also put inside here, lesson 158, what has been given you. So what are you? You're real. In the course, Jesus says, you, the mind is the activating agent of spirit. That's in clarification of terms. But in this lesson 158, Jesus says, what's been given you? The knowledge that you are a mind, in mind, and purely mind, sinless forever, wholly unafraid, because you were created out of love, nor have you left your source, remaining as you were created. This was given you as knowledge of which you cannot lose. So the knowledge, see, knowledge comes and understanding comes after false perception is changed to true perception. The purpose of the course, Jesus says it in the workbook in different parts, is not understanding and knowledge. That's not the purpose of the course. The purpose of the course is change your false perception to true perception. And that's how you do this true forgiveness in your workbook lessons. And then later, you get knowledge and understanding. But I'm here just to explain you're a mind, in mind, purely mind. That mind is the activating agent of spirit because your reality is immortal spirit. So, but in the course, Jesus says the mind seems to have split itself. Now, seems to because that's a dream. You can't split something that God created. It's whole, pure, perfect, full, vast, unchangeable, impermanent. But in our dream, we seem to split our mind and hear the voice of ego, which is false, which is meaning a separate personality, a, a, a personality, believe, a thoughts that we believe we're a body, experiencing we're a body. And then there's the voice for God that is, is the mediator between the false world and God's, and God's heaven. So that's why we turn our day over to Holy Spirit, because the pur uh, purpose, the second purpose of the course is for you to undo enough impure um, thoughts so you can hear the voice for God. 
and that is entirely possible. So we seem to have split our mind, but you really are a whole mind, pure, in mind, meaning in God's mind. Okay, so when I'm out walking, I just will stop and I'll like kind of walk in place and I'll go, I'm going nowhere, doing nothing. And you know, that really brings me back to the core of the course. Then what am I doing here? What am, if I am going nowhere and doing nothing, see, Jesus says, this is a journey of no distance. We're dealing with our minds. We're correcting our minds and how we know what thought, who we're agreeing with it, whether it's ego or Holy Spirit is how we feel. Jesus says, our mood and our feelings tell us which voice we've agreed with. Because see, you're not the thinker. Of, you're not these thoughts. The, these thoughts are ego. You are stillness, peace, love, joy, quiet, quiet. That, that is stillness, light. Um, but these thoughts pass through our mind. So what, and remember our definition of heaven, you're the awareness of perfect oneness. What happens slowly in instances, you'll get an instant of being aware of that you're just, that you're not thinking these thoughts. These aren't my thoughts. I didn't think, who thought that? That, or that Lama Surya Das, when I go to retreats with him and his group and their, their meditation, he'll say, just stop a minute and think, what's thinking this stuff? <laughs> Ask yourself, what is doing this? And then then if you, if you can get like an instant, a, a sacred pause, you realize you're the stillness, you're the awareness, you're the awareness, your spirit. And I call it like you're kind of back here looking out in 3D, seeing your form and all the dream is projected in front of you like a screen, a movie screen. Those can be instances where you're aware that your mind just believe that tree was real right there. We focused on the tree and believed it was real. Now, that's when I also bring up, we never ever put our body in harm's way. I go to the doctor, I take my vitamins. <laughs> I ask Holy Spirit, help me to be alert when I'm driving. And that's when, when I'm driving, I'm in the moment, the only moment that you don't let your mind wander. That's the other thing. You're, grat you're, you're realizing your mind just idle, has idle thoughts. And Jesus says in the course, you're too accepting of your mind wandering. Quit this. <laughs> Stop this. <laughs> Come on now. Come on, you holy sons of God. <laughs> get, a, get, a, get a grip on this. <laughs> so you, like I journal, I still journal. And you journal your thoughts and you ask yourself, who's thinking that? Who's believing that my that politician is a stupid ass or, or saying that to me? And I agreed with it. And then that means you're a stupid ass because every thought you think goes into your unconscious mind and then you believe it of yourself. And then you've got karma to undo. You've got another thought to unpeel off the onion layer. So you're just... You're trying to get a sacred pause to step back, count to 10 before you just have a knee jerk reaction because you're the awareness, you're the awareness, you're this spirit that's all encompassing, that's aware of this dream. So, um, <laughs> so when I'm out there, I'll, walk, I'll stop and I'll go this moment, only mama, and I'll go, what was I thinking? And then I bring my mind back to the stillness. I, I'm not kidding you. This is what I do. I bring my mind back. And that's also called uh, collapsing your mind back on itself. You're like behind your eyes. There's it's this uh, uh, vision or this recognition is a vision that you're it's a mind that's in back of your eyes, not the two eyes that are looking out here in front. That's duality. As you practice these lessons and this true forgiveness, slowly your awareness comes back into your mind and you, you heal, you do enough forgiveness work. Holy Spirit can heal unconscious guilt and more layers of onion get unpeeled and you have oh, holy instances of being aware of that stillness in your mind. And remembering you're the dreamer of the dream. I'll say that to myself. 
I'm out there. I'm the dreamer of the dream. And in one of Gary Renard's books, Art and Persia are saying to him, uh, repeating this sentence from Jesus's Course of Miracles, where he says, you're mentally reviewing what's already gone by. And either Art or Persia say, what's a better description of a movie? It's already been filmed. It's in the can. It's already been directed. And now it's being projected on a projector behind you onto a screen in front of you with this all this light in this projector. But these images are in that light being projected out on that screen in front of you. And Art and Persa say to Gary, you're not going to go up to the screen and cut the screen. What good's that going to do if you don't like what movie's playing out there? You go back to the projector and you change your, your film. You change your thoughts. Now, this is a process. And it takes, it really ultimately takes years. And I'm still ongoing in the process. I'm not completely enlightened and awakened. No, I'm not. This is a process and Holy Spirit and Jesus take you by the hand slowly. So there's not fear. They would never thrust you into fear. And if you ever feel fearful or sad or anxious or irritated, that's ego. You've, we've, you've then agreed with egoic thought. Then you choose again and ask, Holy Spirit, let me see this differently. We just keep doing the same practice for years. This is how I got to where I am. I just diligence and faith and devotion and just it works. I'm here to motivate you that this all works. Don't give up. Stay hang in there. This does this. Now, what's wonderful about that section is that Jesus gives you a way to kind of um, get an awareness of beyond the body. And he, I'm going to read this section because it's just so powerful. Let me, let me, um, well, see, I kind of thought about it and I'm going to read them what I wrote in among this and it might help you. He wants you to join with something. It's called it, called it. It's, there's it. And that it is, is different. Um, can't go in here. There's different it's that Jesus says here in this. Let me find the whole paragraph for you. Okay, here it is. He wants you to have that feeling. He says, some people have felt that feeling of being transported, you know, out of their body for just a second. And he says here in chapter 18, section six, paragraph 11, everyone has experienced what he would call a sense of being transported beyond himself. This feeling of liberation far exceeds the dream of freedom sometimes hoped for in special relationships. Wow. So a uh, special relationship is our loved ones where we're hope we're, yeah, it's a dream of freedom. Oh, jeez, that's well, only you will be totally free. You'll be released of, from the form and you'll be living from this clear light God mind and no longer be attached to these images that seem to be out there. It's a sense of actual escape from limitations. If you will consider what this transportation really entails, you will realize that it's a sudden aware, unawareness of the body, a sudden unawareness of the body, and a joining of yourself and something else in which your mind enlarges to encompass it, encompass it, the IT, the it. It, IT, becomes part of you so you not you unite with it and both become whole as neither is perceived as separate what really happens is that you have given up the illusion of a limited awareness and lost your fear of union the love that instantly replaces it extends to what has freed you and unites with it and while this lasts you are not uncertain of your identity and would not limit it. You have escaped from fear to peace, asking no questions of reality, but merely accepting it. 
you have accepted this instead of the body and have let yourself be one with something beyond it, simply by not letting your not mind be limited by it. <laughs> Don't you love Jesus? He just keeps leading you on. Here's the next paragraph. This unawareness of the body can occur regardless of the physical distance that seems to be between you and what you join, of your perspective positions in space, and of your differences in size and seeming quality. Time is not relevant. It can, it, look the it, it can occur with something past, nice defining telling you how you could join with something. Here's what you could join with. Something past, present, or anticipated. The something, he puts it in quotes, can be anything and anywhere. A sound, a sight, a thought, a memory, and even a general idea without specific reference. Yet in every case, you join it without reservation because you love it. See, now that's the ticket out for just a second. See, what I'm wanting you to do is to feel this expansion, this awareness of this expansion. It's because you love it. So whatever, if you have a sound, a sight, See, there's music, there's songs. Man, there's certain songs like Andre Bocelli's Return to Love. There's a couple of songs. Wow, when I hear that song, I don't even have to think about the great ray or the clear light mind of God. I am gone. I am rejoined with my true nature. And that's what will happen with you too. A thought, a memory. And it, okay, so anyway. Uh, okay, so. There's no violence at all in this escape. The body is not attacked, but simply properly perceived. It does not limit you merely because you would not have it so. You don't want the body to limit you in that second. You're thinking, yeah, I, I know I'm spirit. Let's see, you know, and you just talk gentle with yourself, ask Holy Spirit to help you. You're not rushing about this. You just fit this in sometime in your in your list of some time when you feel comfortable with it, don't want to be panicked about any of this, you are not really lifted out of it. It cannot contain you. You go where you would be, gaining, not losing a sense of self. Now, where you would be, see, being us is really the ticket out as well, where you're just resting in your being us. Your spirit, there's no words to describe that. You're just in the silence and the stillness where you would be gaining, not losing a sense of capital S self. In these instants of release from physical restriction, restrictions, see, we've restricted ourselves into a form with borders and box and sides and tops and bottoms and all that stuff. Our, we've restricted us ourselves. You experience much of what happens in the holy instant. The lifting of the barriers of time and space, the sudden experience of peace and joy, and above all, the lack of awareness of the body and of the questioning whether or not all this is possible. Yeah, yeah, because you go, yeah, right, that's not going to happen. Oh, yes, all this is possible. Then the last chapter, last paragraph in that chapter, in that section, it is possible because you want it. Now, see, all of this life that we're this incarnation, we have we have desired it. We have what he says it because you wanted it. We wanted it. We wanted to believe that we could be separate from God and we could make things separate. We wanted it. But now you're changing what you want. You're changing your beliefs. Look, every, each thing that we have, it's because we believed in it. We believe we were thoughts like that. I forget it's uh, lesson 15. It says, because the thoughts I think I think appear as images, I don't see them as nothing. Because I think I th think them, I think I see them. This is what you've given the body's eyes. It's image making. This is not vision you have made the body's eyes and the image making because the thoughts you think you think appear as images. 
to see, but you're, you're wanting to see the real world, Jesus calls it. The real world is this clear, invisible light of God light spirit that's here now spread out everywhere. The sudden expansion of awareness that takes place when with your desire for it is the irresistible appeal the Holy Spirit holds. It calls to you to be yourself within its safe embrace. There are the laws of limit. There are the laws of limit lifted for you to welcome you to openness of mind and freedom. Come to this place of refuge where you can be yourself in peace, not through destruction, not through a breaking out, but merely by a quiet melting in. That I forgot to say that. So when you're in that meditation, when you're resting in the light, relaxing in the light, you can say yourself melting in the light. You're just dissolving your thought of a form into the light. For peace will join you there simply because you have been willing to let go the limits you have placed upon love and joined it where it is and where it led you in answer to its gentle call to be at peace. So, so, so pick up, you can pick a song. What do you say? Don't you love this, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus, for all these beautiful. See, this is a transition. This is a transition he's having you do. This it. Okay, the something that you join with can be something past, present, or anticipated. The something can be anything and anywhere. A sound, a sight, a thought, a memory, and even a general idea without specific reference. Now, the first time I ever joined with anything in, in the illusion, it was somebody's breath. And it went, and then it went right to their mind. I was joined with her mind. And man, there it's freedom. You are just in that awareness of expansion. And it just an instant or so, but it's just a taste of your true reality, your true self. Um, so see how we're doing on time. Now we got any hands for anybody that's got a question or want to um ask a question or a comment about, oh, oh, here's another, while you're thinking about some comment, this is really powerful, I thought. Oh, okay, now, I have seen some different, uh, I, I look at some of the Course in Miracles sites once in a while, not always, but someone brought up and showed a body with the chakras lined up, and some few people commented, commented, oh, hold it, that's not real, <laughs> blah, blah. That's not in the course, so I'm not going to think about that. Well, see, now, granted, that's not in the course. I'm to tell you, that's not in the course. So welcome, Miss Linda. Welcome, Miss Linda. I'm going to mute you here. Hi, honey. Um, is, but what happens is, so we are mentally reviewing what's gone by. So what does that mean? That, so where is your body's image? It's in your mind. The body's image is in your mind. So I'm dreamer of the dream. So where's the dream? It's in my mind. And in, oh, I love it. In one of Gary Remard's books, Art and Purser are saying to him, just think about it. When you dream at night and you remember the dream or you wake up and you're lucid dreaming, you recognize you're dreaming. What is dreaming this dream? What is seeing that dream? What is, you think you see these body images? You're running around, you're talking, you're, you're having dinner, you're whatever you're doing. <laughs> what is seeing that dream? You're asleep. Your eyes are closed. It's your mind. Well, that's the nighttime dream. Well, Jesus tells us in the course, we're just serial dreaming. We're going from the nighttime dream to the daytime dream. So now what I'm, what we're doing here is we're taking our daytime dreams, G, uh, what Jesus is having us do with advanced forgiveness, turning our day over to Holy Spirit and meditating, is we are becoming lucid dreamers of our daytime dream. Lucid, because you're recognizing by your feeling what the heck thought you just had about a brother a politician, a family member, an animal, whatever, an, a rock, 
can marry. It's an animate or inanimate object. It's still a thought, a judgment, interpretation that egos put out there. And I agree with it. Like in chapter 31, Jesus says, you're the decision maker. You can be back. You're the awareness, the decision maker, the observer. You don't have to agree with these thoughts, but we do because it's knee jerk. So how do you know who you agreed with? So your feelings. So then you choose again, Holy Spirit, help me. Now you're becoming lucid because in that heartbeat, you can say, I'm going to practice forgiveness on that person or that object. And you go, your spirit, whole pureness and all is forgiven and released. Or you say all of it, or you just stand there for a second and go, I'm going to fake it. Glenda says, fake it while I make it. I'm going to imagine that clear, invisible light of spirit that's there past the body. Because that's what Jesus says. Look beyond the body, past the body to the light that's there. So you are, that's lucid dreaming. And let me tell you, that builds on itself. And what happens then you, uh, in uh, Gary Renard's books, he talks about, but uh, there's only a couple places, that G, maybe one that Jesus talks about, dimensions of time and space. But Art and Persa clarify it, that when you practice forgiveness, once you think, you look out, nothing changed, nothing's happening, I'm bored. And you, and you go, I don't know, I'm not going to do this. I have sticky notes still, different places, but I, when I was practice them for five years. I had them everywhere. My bathroom, my kitchen, my computer, because we got to remember to do it. We've been remembering for billions of years to see false images. You got to remind yourself, change your thinking. I want to think with Holy Spirit. I want to think with Jesus. So you're, you're become lucid dreaming in your daytime dream. And man, that will change up, change, show up in your nighttime dream. But what happens, Art and Persis says it, there's, you, there is a script you, we each agree to, but within the script, there's, I don't even know, thousands or could be millions of dimensions of time and space. And as you do your forgiveness work, Holy Spirit heals unconscious guilt because you can't get to that. That's why it's called unconscious. It's as deep as an iceberg. You cannot get to that. Holy Spirit heals that then your mind is purified of these thoughts of separation from God. And that image that's in your mind, your body's a little image. I always think of little people are in my mind. They're there. And that light shining on those little people in my mind. And the trick that ego did, we projected stuff out there so we could blame this stuff out there for why I'm unhappy, why all this has gone to shit. You know, it's, that stuff out there is wrong, not me. But this all came from my mind. So picture as you undo these thoughts of separation, I'm coming back around to the chakras, your body is in your mind. As your mind becomes illumined, your body becomes illumined. That means it's that light that quantum physics says is just radiating out everywhere, like Julia's picture. You are light. That's what you are. And that's why fake it while you make it. You even visualize that in the hologram, the big projector back there and your image is projected in the light and you can barely see the image because you are light. You are the light of the world. Just like every one of your brothers is the light of the world. Your brother's your savior, but also Jesus says you're the savior of the world because how you think of your brother is how you think of yourself. And I have a little card from one of those little box cards that says it's a holy encounter. Every time you meet a brother, you either find yourself or lose yourself. So you're simply practicing on your brothers, these projections that are out here, and you end up going back, relaxing and meditating. You see, you'll see light in your mind. Ultimately, you will see light in your mind and your vision will go up this great ray. And as your vision goes up the great ray, all the chakras in the body are lined up over there. So you see all these lights, all these colored lights as you go up and then they will be just brilliant white light or yellow light. I don't know, purple light. It all varies. And of course, light experiences are symbolic. All these are symbols of our home in heaven. There's that is an extension of love. We sing a hymn of love to our father still. Heaven is love. Heaven is this awareness of just oneness, this extension of oneness. But the, we have in the process, 
we have we remember we are light because the opposite is darkness is the body is ego denseness rigidity contractedness that's why when you meditate say to yourself relax and you're shaking your shoulders and your arm relax relax melt into the light rest in the light the you're just relaxing this form that's had such a grip on us all these restrictions limiting us is these box is a box you know you are not you're the light of the world well anyway we're 750 so this is a good stopping point for some questions or sharing of some brief experiences. Now, remember, I'm going to stay here. Well, I'll stop the recording and we can get to chat. I love that. We get to chat and know each other. And I love this Zoom. Oh, and before I forget, next week, there will not be a course meeting. Next week, excuse me, I'm on vacation. Woo! I'm flying to North Carolina to see Gary Renard in person. Woo! <laughs> I've seen him four or five times before COVID. Don't you love that? We say things that was before COVID or after COVID. <laughs> so then I'm staying a few days to visit because we used to have a vacation home outside of Asheville. And I've got friends and people up there and just enjoying. See, the other thing is, even though this is a dream, I'm the dreamer of the dream. These are projections. We still enjoy life. We, we drink alcohol if you want to do it. You have food. You have sex. You uh, enjoy sunsets. You drive your car. The bottom line, though, you're alert. You're in this moment, only moment, alert to what ego's thinking. So we're alert when we drive a car. We stay attentive. We're defensive driving because ego wants some chaos in our lives, in the illusion that we're alert so we can go to dimensions of time and space where we won't have the hard knocks we would have had. I mean, that's the beauty of this forgiveness work. You won't even recognize your change in dimensions of time and space. Although uh, sometimes I'll hear a high pitched sound or like a claw, a cog turning and a floor dropping. Sometimes you'll sense you've shifted to another dimension of time and space. And Gary says even they, one time he was so upset, he went to see a movie that was just horrible. And he was asking art in person, why did I go to that movie? They said, well, if you had not gone to that movie, if you'd gone to the one you wanted to go to, you would have been in a horrible accident. So the thing is, even during the day, when I get ready to maybe get my car to go somewhere, if I have ever a thought, you know, go, you know, was your door locked or you want to care, take this with you or stop off at a friend's, you need to go get this. I stop what I'm doing and I go back into the house and do whatever it was. So that choice actually then changed dimension of time because I'm not out there driving when I would have been driving, right? I mean, this is, this is nuances. It's tweaking. You don't have any idea. Holy Spirit's tweaking your dream. Wanting to, you, anybody being here in this Zoom group, you all want to wake up from the dream. So you're practicing. You're looking for tools that are straightforward and cut to the gist of what Jesus is saying in the course. We're not, we're not moving chairs around on the Titanic like some people do, but those people that go to those meetings need that. So that's okay. We're not moving chairs around on the Titanic. <laughs> we're healing our own mind from thoughts of separation from God. Okay, Miss Sally, thank you, thank you. Oh, I just thought I'd share a little bit. Um... I, before the course, I was kind of like a real shy kind of person. And uh, I, I uh, always felt like I was going to say something stupid or, or uh, forget the person's name or so. Um, so lately, you know, I've, I've been really doing a lot of uh, forgiveness work. And, um, and I also, before I get together and talk to anybody, I say this thing, I, I read it to you, Glenda, you know it, but um, it's, um, I'm here only to be truly helpful. I'm here to represent him who sent me. I do not have to worry about what to say or what to do because he who sent me will direct me. I'm content to be wherever he wishes, knowing he goes there with me. I will be healed as I let him teach me to heal. And I say that before I get together with people. And it's it's kind of Powerful. like amazing. Powerful. That uh, I, I don't worry about what to say. And, and I talk to more people and I find 
more things out about them because I'm I, I'm representing the Holy Spirit in my mind. It's not me, you know, I'm, you know, and uh, uh, we just went to um, Wildwood, New Jersey for a vacation for uh, the weekend. And, um, and all these people I didn't even know were coming up and talking to me. And my husband's like, you talk to everybody. Well, they're talking to you. And I said, I just feel like I'm one with them. Wow. You know, I feel like I'm one with them. And, and I think they feel that. So <laughs> But that, that happens. Share See, that, that happens. Like, you're you're opening up to the yes. delight, the light that you are, and the joy and having fun. That's fun just to share and talk with those people, right? Right. You need to go, and that's a powerful, powerful saying. Gary Renard says that to himself before he goes on stage for every that's talk. What, before he goes on stage, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow! Yeah. Congratulations. I Thank feel you. the same way. I used to be so serious. I was a business owner for 35 years and 25 employees. So serious. But as you do this path, you just get freer, released from uh, concern about how somebody will think about you or whatever. You know, it's more friendliness, openness. Right. right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's beautiful. Okay. I Ms. think Anne Marie wants to say something. Okay, Anne Marie. Um, I had a question. It was way back in the beginning when Glenda, you were given a, an analogy of looking out your eyes with these eyes as duality, but try to imagine behind your head as the mind. And I just wanted to know um, it's not the brain, it's the no. mind. No, and that's is it. The mind is the mind more the pure consciousness instead of the brain the brain is i call it i have no head or skull yeah the mind is unbounded vast it's not limited but we first got to focus our attention on light and then we that makes some us focus on a mind and not our body um but why, the, why I say about put your attention behind your body is you're putting your image in the projection in the movie. Because it's easy sometimes to say, oh, that stuff's a dream here, but is your body part of the dream? So then you're watching, and I'll say Glenda in third person is now having a Zoom meeting. Glenda's doing this, Glenda's cooking that meal, cutting that stuff. Now I still, like I'll say, I'm in the moment, only moment, because as you cut vegetables, you're specific about the knife. And I, I, yet I can see clear light while I'm doing it, but I'm alert to what the hell Glenda's doing, because I don't want any drama here. So it, I talk about myself in third person, because we are this holy mind. Now, Jesus in the course says consciousness is the first split that was introduced in the separation. Because to have consciousness, there's got to be two, two-ness, subject and object. So what we're doing with Jesus's lessons is we're going past dualism, two-ness, to just oneness, which is the awareness that you're a mind awareness of this clear light mind that's here now that's where you'll end up uh, uh, of without a head or skull you're just clear light but um that that's that now yeah but you're conscious you're alert as you're we're using ego to help us be alert to the moment only and then in a second i'll take focus my attention Behind my eyes, that's, that was a saying that came from Lama Surya Das, that Dzogchen group, his highest Tibetan Buddhist teaching, that he says, nirvana is mind turned inwardly, recognizing its nature. See, mind turned inward, meaning it's turned upon itself. It's turned back versus mind with the two eyes is projected looking out like this. So you'll end up being back behind the eyes with vision. And that's also another way to think about the great ray. The great ray comes down the middle of the head. So that's back behind the eyes is the great ray, that column ray of light, that cord of light. 
So all these things you're practicing or thinking about are is just softening you to this paragraphs from tonight's Jesus is chapter 18, where you're losing your the restrictions on your body and going to this unawareness of the body, expansiveness of the mind. But now we're not real technical about it because see, we're talking, I'm talking knowledge here and understanding that I've gained after false perception was changed to true perception that took me five years. So this get, but see, you're getting a jump. Y'all are getting a jump on this because if you can visualize the light and that rejoining with the light, that helped you in your practice because that's what you are. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else got a question here or comment? Well, I okay, was thinking Troy. when you were now. Let's see, oh. Julia, are you next, and then then Troy? Troy can yes. go first. Okay, Troy, go first. <laughs> uh, I wanted to talk about how my practice, it how I get these experiences with light from a, after a true forgiveness experience, and then I go back into the ego. You've often talked about how that happened. Ping pong ball. It's ping pong normal. ball. Normal. Right. Let other people know how that's normal. And or my you reminded me about my first out of body, spontaneous out of body experience. And I even wrote it in the margin <laughs> at the time that I read this in 2006 that I first read A Course in Miracles. So I could talk about either one of those if anybody was interested. So. Oh, now let's clarify what she's talking about. I want to ego can say, oh, you're not doing you just went back to thinking with me and you just were upset and angry and irritated with that person. You're not you're not progressing. What the heck? Forget it. Well, picture 100 percent of the time we were thinking with ego. Then it maybe went 80 percent ego, 20 percent. I'm catching my thoughts and going to Holy Spirit. But then it'll go 60 percent ego. 40% Holy Spirit, then it goes 50, 50, but picture 50, 50, that means a thought ego, thought Holy Spirit, <laughs> confusion, but you're at least making progress, it's 50, 50, it ain't a hundred and zero, so then you go, you know, 30% ego, 70, it's a ping pong ball, a pendulum, so you're not beating yourself up because of the, the non-stability or non-consistency, because it's only in the last few months that I'm concentrating on stabilizing being in the light, being in that clear light mind. And I stabilize that because that Lama Surya Das told me just rest in the light. See, I share with you high things that are, these are pith instructions from a Lama telling me how to be, because I said, I don't know how often I can be in the light. He says, well, you're, it's hard to join when you're not separate. It's just a thought keeping you separate, Glenda. It's just a conceptual thought. Just rest in the light. Let the light settle. And then that comes to me about that, <clears throat> that picture, P-I-T-C-H-E-R, where you're pouring, Holy Spirit's pulling, pouring love hearts down your great ray so you can picture you're the love you are. Rest in that love. So these these things help you become more calm, more calm, where you can then be more peaceful and still to hear the voice for Holy Spirit. And you may not even think it's the voice. It could be just a thought comes to you or you get inspired by it. You hear a song and that you go, that's the solution of something I put on my altar that I wanted a solution for. Or she had a, overheard a conversation. People were having, there's a solution to a day-to-day -day thing. <clears throat> Holy Spirit does not forsake you in your day-to-day -day dream. He will help inspire you with solutions, how to live your life comfort as comfortably and smooth as possible if we listen. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. Now, um, Julia, because it's 804. Julia, if you want to share yours and then question. I. Uh Sure. I was just, um, just some thoughts that came through. Um, one, I'm really grateful that you and Sally are both uh, 
have made these shifts and come out and shining. I'm sorry, I'm at the fire landing. So <laughs> go ahead and we'll, I'll talk later. <laughs> well, we can still hear you. You can, because there's, yes. there's, there's a lot of dogs around oh. in there. Making okay, that is a little loud. During chat, if you stay for chat, then yeah. maybe, okay, that'd be good, because you're right, that is a lot of sound. Now, yeah. then we got a minute or two then. Then, Troy, you want to share that joining, that you joined with something? If it's brief, you know, that'd be a, in, interesting. Um, what did you join with? No, no, I, I truly, I did not had to do another true forgiveness experience. You know, I had to truly <clears throat> forgive and uh, to get over some pain. And then the light just naturally was coming into my mind really strong for a few days. And then it started to fade. So that's when I remembered about you saying about the ping pong and that was really really helpful to not chastise myself and yeah oh yeah ego ego really wants to beat us up but boy let me say you're doing something very few people ever have done is practice this advanced high this is the highest uh, type of forgiveness in in the world what jesus is saying here you're looking past the body to the immortal spirit that's there and ultimately, you'll see only God-like spirit, clear, invisible, here, pristine. It builds on itself. This is not, the, the, boy, the ego, what he was doing when <laughs> we had, Helen Chipman agreed to do this. Then I had no idea. This is, this builds on itself, you guys. So please, you know, you, you think nothing's happening. Just keep practicing. It's true. Anyone else have a comment or thought to share? Oh, yeah, someone's commenting. They see brilliant white light behind Troy. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute, let me read that. <laughs> it's from Julia. From you Julia do, Sally. you have a bright light behind you. You're, you're one to see, Sally, you see it too? <laughs> I do. Oh, oh no, that's, that's that. <laughs> oh, darn. <laughs> well, that represents her light. <laughs> that represents uh, everybody's light. That's okay. funny. Oh. Okay. Well, if no one has any other question, then we'll conclude our meeting for tonight and I'll just stop the recording. And oh, so let me clarify next week, which is what? October 5th, is it? I forget. Next Tuesday, there is not. A course of, let me make sure that's the correct date. I think so. You know, I don't want to be off on this. October. Yes, October 5th. Yeah, because uh, uh, there is not a, a Course of Miracles meeting. And so feel free to continue reading in this chapter 18 and practicing, join, you're thinking about rejoining with some one of these it's, a song, a thought, a mind, a breath of somebody's light in somebody's eyes. And, and what I found when I was practicing, thinking about this joining, the, I was nervous. I was nervous and kind of fearful, like what? Mm -hmm. So it's normal to be nervous. So you just say, recognize that nervousness and you just kind of, you reason with yourself. That's the other thing Jesus says in A Course of Miracles. He reasons with us so that we learn to reason with ourselves. And I'll say, hold it. That's ego for me to be nervous. I'm going to do this. And, and then I want to do this. I desire this. And then that joining with that breath, just, oh, I know what Holy Spirit said then, relax. The word came from, and then I relaxed into that breath and I was gone. I was one with that person's breath and mine. So, so see these same things from that Lama Suri Das, relax, and then Holy Spirit. Throughout the course, he talks about relax, release, see you're releasing your, thought that you're a body you're relaxing into that you unconsciously don't even know what you're doing you're relaxing into that light that you are remember it's love or a call for love but you are created from love you are love so anyway so practice and then that following week let's have some examples and it, it can succeed or not it the big thing is you tried and you just are practicing and it's no big deal to not join 
It's the mm -hmm. desire or the belief. Like I said, we've had billions of years of false beliefs. So these, these are a real, this is a real <laughs> belief, a desire. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm gonna stop recording.